why I drew his hand back with the Sigma Master books. And uh, right, so this is a recent one, part of the um, Library Hall books I got a um, couple of weeks ago. And uh, I read this in a couple of days, I really enjoyed it. So, Valkyrie by Kate O'Hearn. International author, best selling author of Pegasus, which I haven't read. Uh, much loved by Eric Rowe and author Percy Jackson. Well, wow, that, that, that is a statement. Okay, so. Valkyrie, Norse goddess, chooser of the slain, reaper of souls. Fair dreams of dreads are turning 14. The official end of her childhood and time to take up the full duties of a Valkyrie. But Fair doesn't want to find it in the footsteps of the legends before her. As she observes the human world, she wonders what it is like to make friends with girls and laugh with boys without fear of causing her death with one touch. And then on her first mission, she reaps a soul with unfinished business and sends it to the human world on the desperate quest. Would you find out the true meaning of being human or being legendary? Okay, so, Kate O'Hearn. Right, first of all, I uh, actually really enjoy this book. It's a bit cluttered. It's kind of fantasy, Norse retelling, school drama. But I I liked it. This is a very, very strong protagonist. It's rare. So, anyway, in, um, in Asgard, Frey doesn't fill in. Okay, she first doesn't look pretty as a um, older sibling. She's actually the youngest of the Valkyries. She's got no one to play with or communicate with, and oh, she's turning fourteen. So she's a teenager about to be, become the Reaper of Souls. Okay, now the soul reaping is normally done on the battlefield. Okay, that's where where someone has choose to ascend, pass on to the next world, or join the Valhalla and basically drink mead. Now, Freya is actually half of that. Her father is a warrior who basically stayed and. So it's like she's like a half, I call her a half Valkyrie, but because of that, her unwillingness to fit in, she kind of wants a little bit more. She wants to kind of um, ex uh, explore humanity. So now the problem is, it's not the problem is, but the thing is, when you think now of thanks to the Marvel films, you think of Asgard and Thor and Loki and Tom Hiddleston, you always got that mental image in your head, okay? So it kind of throws you straight in. Okay, this bit here I absolutely love. Now this book came out in what year did this book come out? In two thousand thirteen, and I yeah, she's definitely channeling a bit of Tom Hiddleston in this bit here. Standing back against the wall behind the dais was Loki, the trickster and unrelated blood brother to Odin. Unlike the other men of Asgard, he wasn't strongly built, nor did he wear or carry armor. So he wear armor, carry a weapon. He had long, dark brown hair and sparkling, mischievous eyes. Freya had knew even less about him than she did for. Only that reason untold, Odin tolerated his presence in Asgard, despite all the troubles he liked to cause. Mother said he was dangerous and that he was she was always one of fair to stay away from him. Mm-hmm. So Yes. But this is where basically Freya makes a choice to join the Valkyries. Okay? And with um Oris, who is her her raven on her shoulder, okay? Prophet of Raven, okay. Um, basically, communicating with like a telepathic partnership. She makes a choice to join the battlefield where she meets a soldier who gives it gives her his mobile phone and says, Take care of my family. And she uses this opportunity to go down to earth. Now she sneaks away through Hemdale and the Bifrost, and I love this bit. I just, like, I don't know why, because you just think it is over. I can't help it. Here you go. Bifrost is a living bridge, and she sneaks through Hemdale, and you just think it is over. Bifrost was a living bridge. Everyone who used it to reach Earth knew they could not control it. Fate would send them to where it was not where, where they would arrive. In this case, with Fae flew free of the rainbow colours. Discovers your sun high above Europe. Like Asgard, it was night in all of Europe. Okay. As part of a train to be a Valkyrie, Freya has studied in detail the geography and history of all countries of Earth, including the ever changing borders. She was trained in warfare, knew details of every battle fought since the dawn of time. She herself, while growing up, had attended many of the battlefields to watch the Valkyries work. Set in the course head towards the United States. Had it been a long time since she'd been to this country, so it had been a long time since she'd been to this country. Soon they were soaring over a vast ocean. Okay. 
they're trying to get to Chicago. Now it's interesting because you'd think where she lands would be a bit more snazzy, a bit more rich, but no, she basically lands in really, really crappy areas. And where she meets Curtis. Now, Curtis she trusts and he owns her trust, okay? But Curtis takes her to her next destination, but to save um to save his family. However, in the meantime she meets Archie, so he's setting up the players that are gonna come into question later. Archie is not as no father, it's from a very neglected background. He's teased and called Daisy because he's slightly effeminate, but there's a bit of a juxtaposition here because I don't know if the author intended for Archie to be gay, okay? Um because I I read the book with the impression that Archie was. And that was his that's why he was teased, because he was an outcast because he was gay. And maybe that was the intention. However, he eventually becomes the paired with Freya. They kind of start, in a way, kind of seeing each other, they become kind of close like that. I'm not sure what the intention was, but basically she meets Archie, who is um, a year older than her. Well, not a year older than her. She's 14 in Valkyrie years, but she's like hundreds of years older in Human years. And, but... They kind of move in together, kind of live uh, live uh, like as roommates, because the mother's away, because she's his head, basically, okay? Yeah, so, but, and then she finds a family she's got to protect, and it's... Uh, this bit, I'm going to go into more detail, okay? This is when she meets, um, where Freya meets uh, Archie. Why were those boys beating you? Archie dropped his head. They always have, ever since I was young. They call me Daisy, steal my money and beat me up. Why? Because they can, Archie said flatly. There's a group of them that pick on us. They call us the Geek Squad. We don't fit into any of the groups at school. But because we're a little bit different and get higher marks than them, they always beat us up. Freya shook her head. I don't understand. Why don't you fight back? Defend yourself. Okay, right. So yeah, so Archie is being basically bullied at school. Okay, and then, but the thing is that she went down to Earth to find a, to help a family, and that's that settled really really quickly. Like, because Freya's got money, and so the land, okay, at Tamika, that's the grandmother because, um. The individual she meant to be saving, who passed on, Tyrone Johnson, okay. When by the time Fred's gone gone down, um, his wife's passed away through an uh, accident. Developers want the land, the house is on, and the house really isn't all that to start with. Freya has money. She helps the grandparents, so um, the grandmother, um, Tamika, and the two children. And Tamika's actually dying. So Curtis and Carol, who helped Freya out in the meantime, are going to adopt the children. It's kind of sorted out way too quick, way too easily. You'd think a big kind of development like this is kind of like, we'll just throw money at it and now you own the land kind of thing and protect the land from these developers. And it kind of goes nowhere from there. And I was out there thinking, hold on, hold on. No to respect here, okay, but Tamika is dying. Curtis and Carol, who helped um, Freya when she first landed, basically... Curtis drove her to where she needed to go, drove her in a truck, okay? Um, it's just it's bypass, because at this point, okay, Freya, who is under the alias of, of um, Greta, because her real name is Hidden, she's at school, and she's learning how to, you know, mix in, and she's got a fantastic voice, and everyone's moved her, moved by her, because she's, you know, obviously a Valkyrie, she's got a fantastic voice. And Aurus becomes her support raven okay you know it's what animal she's got one on her shoulder okay yeah so and at the same time up in asgard people are starting to look for her um loki the trickster is kind of giving like stuff away they're trying to like find Freya to bring her back oh i should be in trouble it just seems way too much is going on if, if you get what i'm saying is and then that she kind of oh i love this then that she gets salt her her horse, if you will, and then with Archie, they got thrown through the city, so basically she becomes Batman. She starts fighting crime. Having people. So she becomes the Cape Crusader. If anyone touches her, it instantly die. And then there's JP the bully, who's an absolute thug, who his 
Destiny is actually to kill Archie. Do you can't yeah, do, do you actually get on with the get what I'm saying? There you go. Now this bit here, this is what I'm talking about. My well, favorite the next few weeks ended a blissful quiet routine. Curtis and Carol spent more time at Tamika's house as they went to stop John Roberts' developments. A strange crime had descended from the developers and Carol was getting nervous. Her research showed the developers were not easy stopped because Carol was a lawyer. Okay. How how contrived. Her research showed that the developers were not easy stopped. The fact that the house had never been paid off with Freya's money meant nothing to them. It wasn't the house they wanted but the land they stood on. But you sit there thinking, well, what, what's the big deal about wanting the land if Tamika, their grandma, was dying shortly? And Carol and Curtis are going to adopt the children. Then the land isn't important anymore. If you get what I'm saying. If you get what I'm saying. Yeah. So. This book though, however, is really, really good. It's way too much is going on in it. Way too much is going on in it. But I did like Freya or Greta as she is in, as she is in the school. I did, I did kind of like her interactions. There's one bit where... She's going through history, okay, and the teacher's like, okay, well, the history and dates and this and this, and she is like, well, on this on this day, there's this massive battle, and all the souls are reaped by the Valkyries, and then some went to Valhalla, and then was much pleased, and they celebrated with me, and she wasn't being kicked out of the classroom. I thought it was quite funny, okay? She absolutely excels in music, though. It's bit, I love this bit here. She tried to sing about Valkyries, but had never sung to living humans before. I hate to feel this for the humans going to drop down dead. She closed her eyes and imagined she was back in Valhalla with Maya, her sister, at her side. In the next moment, a soft and haunting song sprung from her lips, and the song sung in the tongue of Asgard for all the Valkyries since the dawn of time. It told the story of a great love between a young Valkyrie and a valiant warrior. So beautiful was the warrior's face that the Valkyrie fell instantly in love with him and couldn't bear to reap him. So she went to Odin and begged for the warrior's life. And able to grant their request, Odin took pity on the lovesick Valkyrie and told to give the warrior her name before he died. In doing so, they could be joined together forever in Asgard. Foreshadowing. Total foreshadowing. Because Archie's always destined to die by the hands of JP the Billy. This is an absolute fucking basically, you know, Archie's given extra time to go to a, a dance. You see how convoluted this is? Basically, Archie can't die until they do the, do the prom. After the prom, you know? And then the Geek Squad, because they're all being bullied by JP, who's an absolute thug and his goons, okay? Um, Freya teaches them self-defence. However, I like this kind of urban fantasy, because even though it's an urban fantasy, and very, very contrived, the situations and the people, it kind of dipped high to low. It's kind of like, how could it get worse? Well, you know, everything's going good, Archie is shot. Okay, sorry that's a spoiler, but the book came out years ago. Okay, Archie lives for a little bit longer, Archie's gonna die. Odin basically unleashes um something, I'm not gonna spoil, to kinda of give Freya back. The wrong person dragged me to hell, okay? And guess what that person is fine, so let's spoil here, it's JP. However, I generally did enjoy this kind of urban fantasy because Kate O'Hearn has this really, really good way of making you really kind of feel in the moment. Contrived, yes, but when she describes this world, and I think it's about um, Asgard, is you, maybe because we know Asgard anyway, okay, from watching the Marvel films, which, hey, everyone knows those, you kind of feel you're there. She doesn't over-explain things, it's kind of, it's free as well, she takes it for granted. It's not all deep descriptions, it's kind of like, the servants of cleaning so it gleamed golden. It's very kind of in the moment. And yeah, I actually like that. So, I do recommend this book. Valkyrie by Kate O'Hearn. Kudos. Congrats to you. If I do come across the author of Pegasus, if I do come across Pegasus, I'll get it over you as well. So kudos to you. Anyway, this is my 60 book. Sign up. And bye now.